King is coming. He is the Lamb foretold by John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. So we are continuing this Christmas novena. It's time getting ready for Christmas in which we hear the O Antiphons, these uh, verses that we would um, later become the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And so yesterday we heard about O Come, O Wisdom from on high. Today we hear about O Lord of Might, O Adonai of Might. And you'll always hear this O Antiphon during the Alleluia verse. So when we sing Alleluia, we hear that verse that then became the song O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So let's ask that Emmanuel, God with us, truly come to us in a special way during this Christmas. You'll also notice uh, two things. Um, one, we have a new camera right now, um, and uh, we'll be able to see through the virtual, our entire crucifix. And this is a, a much higher quality camera that hopefully we'll be able to have a much better um, outdoor uh, virtual mass as well. So we're going to be working on that. You can, you know, if you're watching it, you can let us know um, how, it, how it works. Uh, the final thing is in the back, you'll see a infuser. You might say, well, why is that infuser there? So um, one of the local area parishes had a very creative idea. Um, we saw this at Holy Cross in Batavia, that um, they took holy water and they put it in a infuser so that as it comes out, it's still moist. So you can just put your hand right over it and you'll actually have holy water come upon your hand and you're able to bless yourself. So we do have the little holy water bottles there, but if you forget it or um, if you'd like to do this, know that as you leave or as you come in, you just put your hand over there and you'll have holy water um, exactly the same as if you were to stick your hand in, in the stoop. So just a, a creative way of being able to give us those sacramentals. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Lord. Thank you, God. 
Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment, endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son. They shall name him Emmanuel which means, God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's just like we just had a little mini uh, sneak preview of, of Christmas. This is one of the Christmas readings. Remember, this is that time in which from the 17th until the 24th, it's a time in which we now focus in on the story of the birth of Christ. So a couple of different things here. And we're going to hear the story from different angles. We're going to hear... Mary's experience. We're going to hear, in a particular way, we hear Joseph's experience here. And this is the year of St. Joseph right now. It started on December 8th. It's going to go all the way until December 8th of next year. And it's important to really get to know this wonderful man of God, this just man. And to see how relatable he is as well. Sometimes we think of Mary and Joseph because of their high level of virtue, and, and we sort of put them on a pedestal, but on a pedestal that says, well, that's just disconnected from me. And so we only just kind of go to them as almost like a, almost like a demigod or something like that. And yet, 
they are truly human persons that were alive in the Holy Spirit. And yet they still had to struggle. Sometimes we forget the fact of the, the perfection of the Blessed Virgin Mary and also the holiness of Saint Joseph and we maybe just think that they just sort of just coasted through life and yet they had real struggles, real um, trials of faith to overcome. We see Joseph today hearing about the pregnancy of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And there's different traditions, and the church doesn't necessarily say, this is what Joseph was thinking, this is this idea of um, Joseph being a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, divided, decided to divorce her quietly. There's, there's kind of three different traditions that you see within, uh, within the church, and in heaven we'll, we'll ask Joseph, you know, exactly what, what was going on there. Um, you know, one understanding of, of um, uh, you know, basically just that sense of Joseph, as he was getting ready to marry Mary, and remember they're betrothed now, so this is that first part of marriage, this is not just an engagement, they are truly legally married, there was just the second part of marriage in which the, um, the, the groom would go off and prepare a place to build a house so that he could take his bride to live with him and then to consummate the marriage. So in this situation now, Mary is found with a child and Mary doesn't explain away everything. She totally puts her trust in the Lord, knowing that the Lord is the one who has given her this child, and the Lord will help Joseph understand in his way and in his time. Imagine, like, if you were in this situation, would you get defensive? Would you try to figure out, okay, how am I going to spin this? How am I going to figure out what to say? And yet Mary has this beautiful silence because she puts her trust first in God, saying, you, Lord, will show Joseph how to understand this. And so in a deep love of Joseph, she gives him space to wrestle with God. Sometimes we think wrestling with God is bad. And yet Jacob wrestled with the angel the angel of the Lord, an image of God. And he was blessed and called Israel. And Israel means he strove with God. And so Joseph is given this moment, and sometimes we think that this is just an immediate thing that happens, but this could have been days, this could have been weeks. Joseph is, 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 is wrestling with this rerouting of maybe his plans, his expectation. You know, there's some tradition of, well, did Joseph take a, 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 a vow of chastity? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. That, that's something, you know, that's um, highest tradition that, that could be there. But even if it was there, he would have never thought that he would have been the, the, the father figure for God himself. So regardless of whether he was truly entering into this marriage, you know, with that great joy and that great desire of that spousal communion, which is good and holy and is natural to marriage, and there was no um, there was no version of the marriage of Mary and Joseph before this time. There's no sort of training ground to say, okay, well, how do I live this this celibate marriage in all purity and in, in the, and true virginity? Joseph didn't have an example before that. And so he's entering into this unknown. And the amazing thing about Joseph is that he wrestles with God, but he knows where to go. He doesn't go into all other things to try to take away 
the struggle. Sometimes that's a way that us guys, when, you know, when we are faced with something, we don't know how to deal with it, we don't know how to fix it, we don't know how to figure it out, many times we'll go to something else to drown our struggles, to numb our pain, to take away that, that sense of, I don't understand. Joseph doesn't do that. Joseph goes to the Lord. He stays in the silence. He struggles with God, and ultimately, God reveals himself through the dream, saying, Joseph, almost as if to say, Joseph, thank you for waiting. Thank you for going into the silence. Thank you for struggling in this situation. And even though you weren't sure exactly what to do, you waited upon the Lord. And so, Joseph, take Mary, your wife, into your home. This is of the Holy Spirit. And you, Joseph, I'm calling you to not be afraid, but you are going to have the role of naming him. You will call this child Jesus, which means that he will save his people from their sins. This revelation of God's plan unfolding to Joseph in this moment, that this is not merely the Messiah, but this is someone who has the ability to save his people from their sins. Only God can forgive sin. The Messiah originally was thought to be the one that would free us from earthly powers, from Babylon, from Greece, and now from the Roman Empire. And yet, what God is revealing to Joseph is that this child is destined for something so much deeper, the deepest enemy, sin, death. And that means that there's something more to him. That means that there is a divine quality. And Joseph is the one, by naming him, that takes legal right to be called his father in an earthly way. He's brought into the family. He's not the biological father. But because of his naming, it's not merely just saying, well, here's your name, but the naming is saying, I now take you as if you were my own son. And I will love you, and I will provide for you, and I will raise you up to be a man of God. And Jesus is the ultimate man of God because he is God. But this is the calling of Joseph. In, in the naming, all of that's there. I will bring you up in the law of the Lord. I will teach you to read the scriptures. I will teach you to learn the history of our forefathers. Jesus learned all of this through Joseph. He learned how to pray through Joseph. He learned how to read the Word of God, and he is the Word of God, through Joseph. You just see how amazing this man is. This is why he's called the universal defender of the whole church. It's one of the most important. After the Blessed Mother, he is the, import, he is the most important saint of the whole church. And he didn't say a single thing in the Bible. But he did what the Lord called him to. So we can learn from Joseph. Especially, in a particular way, us men. Fathers, husbands soldiers to take care of their family. We're called to not run away from the struggle, but to enter into it in the silence. Even if we don't have all the answers that to fix, we wait upon the Lord and allow Him to be the one that shows us in His time how we're called to live, how we're called to follow the Lord. And when we run into a trial, when we run into a struggle, when we run into a difficult moment, we don't go away and, and, and find another way to take away the pain of not knowing, of not being able to fix the pain of powerlessness. But we put our strength, or we put our weakness 
in the strength of the Lord as Joseph did. And we follow wherever he leads. So let's ask this great Saint Joseph to teach us how to step into the gap, into the space of silence. to our Heavenly Father. For Holy Father and all church leaders, may the blessing of Almighty God be upon them, especially during this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. For public authorities across the world, that the Lord bless them with wisdom in policy making and governing. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are lonely, May they be blessed by the love of family and neighbors, and know that God is always with them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who grieve for loved ones lost in the past year, may God give them strength, peace, and consolation in the midst of their mourning. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they find comfort and eternal joy with God. We especially pray for the repose of the soul of Danielle Hensley, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box. We pray for all the intentions that have been given to us online or in various ways. For all those prayers that are within our hearts, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for the intention of our Holy Father. We pray that our personal relationship with Jesus Christ be nourished by the Word of God and the life of prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask all of this. Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, has become for us the bread of life. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, 
May, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on your sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a reminder that tomorrow um, you can sign up online if you go to our website. Um, there'll be confession spots available where I'll be hearing confessions throughout the day over at the garage um, right by the rectory. So if you're um, wanting to, to get to confession before uh, Christmas time, um, please sign up so that I can know um, what, what spots to be ready for confession. Um, and it'll go from 7 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then 6 to 8 in the evening. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen.